Hello, hello. Welcome to Fake Film Fans, uh, where I'm going to have a conversation with some of my great friends. They're all uh, fans of films, but they might not be. That's why we're fake film fans. So I'm joined by, first of all, Catherine, the beautiful marshmallow princess. Oh. That's weird. I don't like that makes me uncomfortable. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a new guest this week, the dragon slaying prince, Suede. I, I am also a marshmallow princess, actually, and I'd, I'd like to be referred to as such. Come on. I would Seriously. like to be the dragon slaying prince anyway, so we'll just swap. I, I feel I feel more comfortable with that, actually. I feel more comfortable. There we go. I, I do. I like that. Yeah, because technically this is episode uh, one, so I think Swain might not be our new guest, per se. So I should introduce myself, too. I'm Walter. We'll be three co-hosts working on this podcast, and we'll see how it goes. Uh... I wanted to ask how you guys were doing first of all, though. I mean, life is life is life is good. I uh, I bought so I I took a sleeping pill probably about a week ago, and then I couldn't remember if I took the sleeping pill, so I took a second, and then when I woke up in the morning, I purchased Pokemon Shining Pearl, uh, which is not a huge problem, but it is sixty dollars that that sort of slipped out of my pocket because I couldn't remember how much of my sleep medication I take. Isn't that like Xanax? No, it's nothing like Xanax. It's I wish it was Xanax. Are you kidding me? Pokemon and Xanax, it'd be fucking perfect. Um, no, so I've been I've been trying to level up my Pokemon. A um, lot of lot of Pokemon. Uh, what have I been up to in the past two weeks since I spoke to Walter? I think I've gone on some hikes. Um, uh, mostly just been it's like the end of the quarter for me. I'm in graduate school, so it's like. I have a lot of assignments I've been working on. I've been watching The Sopranos for the first time. I love it. It's amazing. Um, Tony Soprano and I are on the same antidepressant, so. Oh, really? Oh, really? That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> so I feel really seen by him. <laughs> <laughs> How come an antidepressant can be the same antidepressant for so long? Doesn't uh, I know. medicine update? Prozac is just a classic, though. It's yo, Prozac gang, what up, though? Yeah. <laughs> yo. yo, yo, yo. The Prozac, man, it, it, it keeps the voices quiet. That's that's really what you come for with the, with the drugs. It you just gotta, quiets you gotta... everything down a little bit. It does. It does. <laughs> now, I don't know if you have this problem. When I first started taking it, I was having trouble performing. Yeah, everyone yeah, says this. Yeah. I, I did I did not not at all which I was expecting to but actually when I first started Prozac I felt like I was on Adderall medication. Interesting. I had really weird side effects. It was like a stimulant. It was crazy. I think I banged a rail of Adderall once in my life. I found it unpleasant and never took it again. Um, but that's that's the closest. I'm because you what college kids? It's like a college kid drug, right? Yeah, I actually, I actually did it. I did more drugs in high school than than college. So I did, I did Same, do honestly. Adderall in high school, and I, I enjoyed it. But <laughs> I ate way too much McDonald's last night. I mean, actually, yesterday, I fucking ordered a bunch of fucking McDonald's and then ate for lunch, afternoon tea, and dinner. And also, I ordered McDonald's from the Asian McDonald's. So. Uh, they had these two new burgers that I wanted to try and they were fucking gross and I knew they were going to be gross before I ordered them but I still wanted to order them it's because Asians think that like western food is like meat with sweet sauce so one was a cheese thing and one was a cream of mushroom burger and the cheese thing was like sweet cheese so that was like uh, not my shit it was like a Japanese cheesecake in a fucking hamburger and then the other one was a sweet cream mushroom in my ha hamburger. And I hated it, but I still finished it cold. That hated sounds it, disgusting. I, I also watched, uh, I also finished Revolutionary Girl Utena. Pretty proud of that. Yeah, so. Walter, I just remembered some feedback that I got from our pilot episode. And I would like to ask Swade his opinion on the matter. Okay, I'm very <laughs> opinionated. So, I don't know if you... Did you listen to the pilot, Swade? Uh, I was more sort of doing Pokemon. That's kind of in my thing that I'm about now. Yeah, totally. Is that... 
So, so we discuss at some point, Walter is talking about like eating pizza and we start talking about how much pizza you eat if you ordered a whole piece of pizza to yourself. And apparently Walter eats, he said it's actually, if you roll the tape back, you said one to two, but then you, you revised it to two to three uh, pieces of pizza before you get tired of it. Now I said it's about. I said two to three before I start getting full even. Okay. Okay. I think he's re- revising his position a little bit. He's walking it back. But that's Revisions. fine. He's waffling. <laughs> Me and John Kerry, freaking two thousand and oh god, what was that election? You're waffling. But I said minimum four. Like if you're ordering a pizza for yourself, you're the only one eating the pizza. You're eating four pieces of that pizza. Most shockingly, Walter compared eating three pieces of pizza to eating four hamburgers. Or something Which like is this. Insane. <laughs> it's not that's the insane. same thing at all. That's absolutely fucking wild. Well, that's Walter. what. That's why I thought I said full. That's why I said full because I thought eating four slices of pizza was so much food. Motherfucker! No one eats four hamburgers and it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm pretty full. People eat four hamburgers and then they shit their brains out. That's like insane. Yeah, I. Yes, I can agree, but also I feel like you eat four pizzas, you start shitting your brains out. But. Uh, okay, so I will be, I, I, I know that Kath, Catherine's in the West Coast where everyone's beautiful, and uh, Walter's in Hong Kong, which I imagine is sort of like what uh, what the city in Akira looked like before it got all bad, So I, 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 but I live in Roanoke, Virginia, which is like Mayberry, only everyone's fat and racist, uh, which is pretty chill. Uh, for me, because I'm white. What the fuck is Mayberry? It's well, sir. You're making a podcast about media, and you've never seen the Andy Griffith Show. It's terrible. That's what you're doing for next episode. Is you're gonna mainline a bunch of those, and you're gonna watch it. Um, but so I, I'm a garbage child. So a few, I think it was not last night, but the night before, um, I was driving home, and I was feeling a slightly sorry for myself. Uh, just cause that's what you do sometimes. And I did order a five dollar hot and ready from uh, Little Caesars. And then an order of uh, breadsticks. And I did proceed to sit in my car in the parking lot of the Kroger, which is next to the Little Caesars. And just eat like five slices of pizza and an order of breadsticks. Just in the darkness. I was like a bunch of trash in my car from the bookstore. And it was like st- st- stale cigarette smoke filling the car. And I'm just like, yeah, well, the light, the light from the, in the parking lot sure is nice. I guess I'm going to eat a bunch of pizza. And then when I got home, I finished it. So I, I, when I order a piece of, a, a pizza, I eat the whole thing. Well, yeah, eventually you eat the whole thing. But I feel like in one sitting, like you said, like five, that's also totally acceptable. Yes. Also, like, if you were eating, I feel like, I feel like there's a difference between the amount of pizza you can eat shamefully by yourself and the amount of pizza you're, like, willing to eat in front of other people. Oh, yeah, that's totally true. A shame pizza where, like, you're, like, lying in bed, you're, like, burping a little bit, and you're like, oh, God. Dude, that's my, that might be the fucking issue, because I had to learn how much pizza I could eat through the ways of the Americans. The issue is, I've only eaten pizza with, I mean, th- my first understanding of how much pizza I could eat is through the, like, social gatherings. Everyone would eat one slice of pizza and be like, oh, I'm so full. So I thought eating two to three slices was too much. Because everyone would eat one fucking slice and then be like, oh, dude, I can't eat anymore. I can't eat anymore. So I would eat two slices and be like, okay, well, I guess I overate. <laughs> okay, but I remember when we were roommates going to McDonald's and you would order. And we would go to McDonald's and you would order a double quarter pounder, 10 piece chicken nuggets, a large fries, a filet fish, and a Big Mac. You would consume half of this at the McDonald's. Then we would walk home, and you would consume the rest of it a scant ten minutes after we returned home. Then you would lie on the ground, usually you were drunk, and be like, oh, I can't eat anymore. If I got close enough to you to just poke at you, you'd be like, oh, don't touch me, I'm gonna throw up. You, that is, like, the biggest load of court shit I've ever seen. I've well, ever no, heard. my point is that, like, I thought everyone else did not eat more than two slices of pizza. And two slices of pizza was overeating for everyone. Yeah, we also we also left out the, the little detail that Walter uh, gets tired of the taste of pizza, which might inhibit him from eating more than three pieces. Yeah, that's weird. You don't like pizza. It's bread, dude. It's too much oh, bread. I forgot. Yeah. You're, you're, you're the, the, the rising sun's war against bread. 
I did want to ask you guys about Thanksgiving. So, uh, and you said you were going cooking, right? So I, I've been helping my dad with uh, cornbread stuffing and rice dressing, which uh, is uh, South Louisiana version of rice stuffing. They call it corn. They call it rice dressing. I have no clue why, because um, they're all from the swamps and they don't know anything. I guess. Uh, I've heard dressing and, so and stuffing been... interchangeably. That's that's totally a thing. Right? But I have not heard of rice dressing or stuffing. That is new to me. It's, so it's good. I mean, I, I well, one of the reasons Walter and I, I think, are secretly, like, almost always gay lovers is the amount of rice we consume. Uh, um, okay, what is rice dressing slash stuffing? Uh, it's like rice mixed with, like, pecans um something sweet so we have a pear tree in our backyard so pear, like pears is that a flex um it is a flex yeah it's a flex it's a flex i am the pear god i have i have a lemon tree and a guava tree in my backyard guava oh that is a way better flex than <laughs> that's a cali flex if i do one <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude! It's the West Coast. We all know East Coast, Beast Coast. By the way, let's just say it here: East Coast supremacy. I agree. I'm from the East Coast, so I can't argue with that. Okay, rice, pecans, pears, um, whole hog sausage, um, onions, garlic. Why is whole hog like the funniest way to describe sausage? Uh, I I think I'm not entirely <laughs> sure what the definition of whole hog sausage is. Yeah, My understanding that just pork? it's just. A, is it what? Pork? Isn't that just pork? Whole hog. A whole pig. Yeah, but I mean, there's a di- like, you know... It's, it, What's ham it, hock? Look, I'm not... Oh, a ham hock is good, though. What I don't is know that? if any of you have eaten a ham hock. I have I had it, like... but I don't know what it is. Wait, is ham hocks not those things that swing on trees that you, like, lay back on? <laughs> oh, there we go. Ham, like, ham hock. There we go. He's done it. He's the champion. He's so beautiful. Well, are, you, are you proud of yourself? Wait, I, just, I forgot the word. That's all. No, I just didn't. No, it's hammock. Okay, so ham, ham hock is not the same thing as, what did you call it? Whole whole hog? Whole hog sausage? Yeah, okay. Different. Uh, different things. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure whole hog sausage is just throw all that stuff together. But it's also not in a casing. That's the other thing. So it's not like a sausage. It's like a brick of like loose sausage meat. Great. Um, you know, like a so, and you just mix all that sh- shit together. And sometimes, if one of us is feeling spicy, we'll put it in a pumpkin. I don't know. That's like my dad's thing. He likes to put it in a pumpkin. I don't know. Um, tomorrow's the real cooking day. So I'll um I'm I know I'm gonna make naan. I'm gonna make naan because I've been I've been trying to figure out how to do that, and I'm getting close to being successful. And then I'm gonna make a um. Like a blueberry coffee cake. And then I'll help around the kitchen with everything everyone else needs. This is so legit. I would love to have Thanksgiving at your house. Oh, it'd be great. Everyone's there. Everyone except me will be high, which is cool. Fun times. My mom will be high on Xanax. My dad will be high on (laughs) marijuana, as will my little brother. And they'll just be me. Sober. Frustrated. Full, probably, which will be nice. What about you, Catherine? What's your Thanksgiving looking like? Well, my usual Thanksgiving is not what's happening this year. So usually I'm home for Thanksgiving and I have Thanksgiving with my family around lunchtime and then Thanksgiving with Anna's family at dinner. And what's unique is that Anna's family is composed of three people, her mom, her sister, and her, and they make six pies from scratch. So I go there and we eat a lot of pie and it's amazing what does from scratch mean like they pick out the flour from the uh, ground like a lot too? of people at thanksgiving like just buy pies from the grocery <laughs> store <laughs> <laughs> not flour wheat wheat and then they go to the grind mill that's what i was thinking they don't they don't make their own flour they don't do that so i guess they're posers but um they've got a chocolate pie a pumpkin pie apple pie And then two kinds of cheesecakes. So actually, I guess the basics are five. My favorite is a uh, cheesecake with, like, basically a really tart, chunky cranberry sauce situation on top. That sounds deadly. That sounds fantastic. It's so good. It also sounds something you could, like, 
put it on your belly and it would feel good. <laughs> <laughs> that No, that is one of the things about pie, right? Is that, like, the best pies are the ones that you could also rub somewhere, maybe even on your genitals, and it would be, like, great, right? Like, you can't, you can't fuck a bowl of cornbread stuffing, but you can fuck a chocolate pie for sure. Right, right. And the distinction between fucking a store-bought pie and a homemade pie is just vastly different. So anyways, this year I'm not doing anything, well, I'm not doing anything Thursday, but on Saturday I'm going to a Friendsgiving. I'm going to make green bean casserole and mashed potato. I don't have any friends, so I'll, I will be doing family Thanksgiving. Yeah, me too. My Thanksgiving is uh, Asianized, so that means we have no Thanksgiving. So... <laughs> <laughs> Well, with Thanksgiving over, I mean, it's not over yet, but by the time this podcast gets released, it will probably be over. So why don't we move into talk sharing about our films? Um, since Suede is new, do you want to go first? Or uh, I mean, yeah, I can. I mean, I can start. I, I clearly I watched the best thing, right? I mean, that's the premise of this whole thing is I, I watched the best movie. I didn't also didn't watch a movie. I watched an episode of Batman Beyond. I recently, I, 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 Joe Biden sent me some Joe, some, some money, some Joe Biden money. And so I, I, I've, I've been being a little less frugal than normal. So I did get a subscription to HBO Max, um, which, you know, is this episode is actually sponsored by HBO Max. Um, Thank you, HBO Max. We love you. Yeah. Hit us up. Hit us up. Wait, Swade. So Batman Beyond when you say you watch an episode of Batman Beyond, that means this is a TV show. Yeah, it's a TV series. The, 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 the basic premise is that... Uh, it's also a kid's drawing. Okay, so that's cool. Thanks, Walt. Uh, <laughs> it's really a good show. Uh, so so, so Bruce, Bruce Wayne, the Batman, is now an old man. Uh, and there's all new types of crime going on, and he's, like, just gotten... He keeps trying to be Batman, and he's too old to do it. So he finds this tough young upstart whose name's Terry McGinnis, who's, like, total badass, like, kind of a, a loner. He wears, like, a cool jacket. He's got a single Great mom. Name. Terry McGinnis. It's so good. He's, like, vaguely Asian. Like, like it's never quite... Maybe he's not Asian. He looks kind of Asian. Terry Terry McGinnis uh, tries to rob Bruce Wayne. I think I don't quite remember. I didn't watch the first episode. Um, uh, ba basically, Batman is Bruce Wayne is like, "Yo, you got to be the new Batman," and he's like, "Hell yeah, I'll be the new Batman." Um, and it's actually the same voice actor from the Batman uh, animated cartoon from the '90s. I don't know if any of you have seen that. It's fantastic too. Um, and then Terry McGinnis is his own voice actor. Um, and I, I, I had a VHS copy of the series growing up, and so I have a whole lot of fondness for the show. Um, and I watched I watched episode four, which always made me a little bit sad at the end. Um, but it's like, the, when I think about Batman Beyond, it's like the episode that like stands out to me, because it's, it's just so fantastic. And so basically, it's kind of like a school shooter episode, actually. Now that I'm like watching it as an adult, I'm like, oh shit, this is like a school shooter episode. Uh... But um, the theme song, by the way, is fucking fantastic. You gotta listen to the theme song. Cyberpunk meets new metal. It's so good. Um, but so the premise is basically that this shitty kid named Willie, who like gets picked on by everyone, um, his dad like also bullies him, and his dad uh, he he's uh, Willie's into this girl, this like total Stacy. Uh, but Nelson the Chad is like, no, no way, bro. This is my girl. This is totally my girl. And Willie, like, gets pushed around. And his dad is, uh, Willie's dad is, like, building these giant, um, apartment buildings. And the way they have, instead of having, like, diggers and bulldozers or whatever, they have this giant robot that you can psychically control, which is a great idea, um, for your construction worker. And so the, the kid gets psychically linked with the golem and goes to, like, destroy the school because of the bullies and stuff like that. Um, that is school shooter. Yeah, and I know it is, and it's 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 wild too because like, it, it's it's kind of got carry vibes where like, when the kid first brings the robot to destroy the bully's car, um, the bully like kind of leaves the girl that Willie's into. Uh, her name, what is her name? Um, it's it can be Stacy, Chad and Stacy. Um, uh, Chad like runs away and uh like leaves stacy and so she's like super butt hurt next day at school and she's like i might as well just go to the dance with willie and then she sees willie and asks him but then like a jerk later on um the Ch chad chad mcchatterson chad thundercock comes back and like it's like hey babe 
I'm sorry, I was an asshole. You should dance with me. And she's like, but what about Willie? And he's like, I'll take care of Willie. He'll get it. He's a nice guy. And she's like, oh, and like totally ignores the fact that this guy's go, about to go bully the shit out of poor Willie. And so then, of course, he throws Willie. This is the wildest bit. He takes Willie and he just throws him into the ocean. They just throw Willie into the ocean, which would kill him. Um, but he's, he survives. I mean, it's a, but it, I, like it's a long fall. Um, so Willie then, is the bad guy here? Yeah, because like he's getting picked on, and so he he then he summons his giant robot and like t- just tries to destroy everyone at school, like Carrie, because he's been being picked on, and of course Terry, who's also at the dance because he's a high school, has to do his Batman thing. Um, and the part that always made me cry as a child, or not cry but upset, I mean I probably cried uh, as a child was that um, the robot gets destroyed by 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 Terry, who's Batman, new Batman. And the kid comes over to the robot and he's crying and he's like, no, no, come back to me, come back to me. And as a child, I felt like so connected to this kid who just lost his robot friend. But what I realized as an adult is it feels like he's crying about his loss of power. Like it's, it's, it's really weird. Like it feels less like, oh, my best robot friend and more like for once in my life. I was like had a, a a a small amount of power, and of course, because he's like a dude and an asshole, he's like, "What am I gonna do with my power? Kill a bunch of people," which is like super school shootery. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, like Stacy and Chad suck, but like you know, they don't need to be destroyed by a giant robot. Suck, they're just like shitty high school kids. I know what you're saying though, because as an adult, I get some of those feelings too. Like, uh, when I got fired from my first job and I started crying, it wasn't like oh, I'm crying because I got fired. It was like, wait, I got my first job. Uh, I was able to do it for the first time in my life. And then I failed. That There was a sense of power there that I like lost. So, What was that I, job, Walt? As a, a waiter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got fired in two days because I sucked at it so bad. <laughs> Oh, was this the dumpling store? Yeah, and then I called you and cried. Oh, you were so oh. upset. It was yeah. very sad. It was very sad. The- but no, that's what I mean. It's like there are a lot of things in life where you think you lose them because like you lose them because of something like a friend or because a sense of pride or a sense of belonging or something like that. But sometimes it is also very related to power. The the episode feels a little bit like a meditation on the different like flavors of toxic masculinity a little bit, not to get like too like <laughs> woke or whatever Wade, but like you're so like, woke i'm dude i am the wokest i am it's just because i i miss all the queens bro i just i need these queens yeah there's no harley quinn in this show too right there is not a harley quinn in batman beyond but there are roving gangs joker is like not around anymore but instead there are just roving gangs of like shitty like teens they they're, they're dress up as the joker like that's like the main gangs around town are just people dressed up like clowns uh, oh yeah, we, we this was not in the podcast earlier, but they they found out about my secret clown fetish, which is like only <laughs> slightly <laughs> weird, in my opinion. Um, well, no, but but so Nelson, right? The toxic masculine Nelson is like sucks. That's his name. Um, the the Chad guy. Nelson sucks. He's like super mean. He he bullies. He 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 bullies poor Willie. So does Willie's dad. Treats him the same. Uh, just like you should have. Like Willie gets hit, and then when the dad sees, he notices that he's been hit, he's like, "You should have hit him back harder." Which is like, that's not cool. Willie's like having a hard time right now, and he's a gifted student. Um, but then like as as soon as Willie gets power, he's just like, he's he's being an asshole. He's 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 like his like male ego is like so necessary to like be flexed. That, and the only one, the only true Sigma male out there, the only true badass is Terry. The Asians, we win again. That's true. That is true. Walter, <laughs> you you are you if there was anyone who was going to be Batman, it would be you lying on the ground after you've eaten a filet of fish, a Big Mac, a 10 piece, a quarter of chicken nuggets and a thing of fries. That's true. <laughs> I have two questions though actually. Uh yeah. First of all, I heard that this show was going to get a live adaption. And I heard oh, that God. the main uh, cast dude was going to be Timothy Chalamet. Oh, Timmy Chapstick. Timmy Chalamet. I, I highly doubt that's going to happen because we're too woke for that, right? Like, he's going to be whitewashing. Or, what is it called? Uh, yellowwashing. I, I could also be being racist because Terry McGinnis has vaguely slanty eyes. I mean, like, it also might just be the fact that I'm a bigoted human. 
Uh, <laughs> fair, fair, uh, fair. <laughs> um, he does have an Irish last name. Yeah, I was gonna say, totally thought Irish from from the last name. But I feel like Not his dad Asian. is Asian. His his dad gets killed by the main series antagonist, who's like this guy with a glowing skeleton. It's like a whole thing. Oh, um, I personally think Timothy Chalamet would ruin it because. I don't know. Actually, fuck it. Let's not say it like that. I just, I don't know. I kind of don't like it when this very handsome, tall guy is getting into all our niche culture stuff, you know. Is Timothy Chalamet very handsome? I don't necessarily think so. Oh, I saw this thing on TikTok that, um, well, actually, anyways, it doesn't matter. It said that um, <laughs> depending on how you how you rate Ryan Reynolds um, tells if you're straight or not. Dude, I man. rate Ryan Reynolds as a eight because my favorite film was definitely Maybe. Oh, uh, he was really good in. Um... God, it's gonna sound like I only watch superhero. <laughs> I don't. I I fucking hate Marvel movies. You do. That's not true. One of my favorite movies is La Noche de Cabiria. I'm super pretentious. That's the um, Italian I... superhero film. That's true. That's true. Uh, Fellini is the Italian superhero. Um, uh, my problem with Timothy Chalamet, first of all, Ryan Reynolds would fuck. Um, Wait, what do you rate him one to ten? Uh, depends what movie. No, no, just in general. Or? Just in general. Like a seven. So what's our what? So what does it mean? Uh, according to it means that context. Walter is straight and Swade is bi. Okay, well that's true. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the higher you go, the straighter you are. That's super good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell me about. Tell me your problem with Timothy Chalamet, Swade. I want to know. My my problem with Timothy Chalamet is that he's beautiful, but like in the way that like uh, a a crystal glass is beautiful. Like I want to have sex with Timothy Chalamet, but then like after the date is over, I want to like drive to an overlook and just like push him off. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> is it because of his chiseled glass jawline? Yeah, he's like at once. He's at once masculine, but he's very small. Like I'm not a huge dude, but like I'm kind of hefty, and like I want to like kiss him and then like throw him. Like he just he's too breakable. He's too beautiful. The the thing that I, I doesn't I don't get about people loving Timothy Chalamet. Well, maybe it is why people love him. He looks like a like what you said. Like he looks like a a boy child to me. Um, I did not say I wanted to have sex with a boy child, Catherine. Let's not uh, put words in my mouth, please. <laughs> <laughs> not you, not you. But I'm saying maybe that people like this like innocence or some I don't know. But I yeah, Catherine's I, actual claim is that whole society likes boy child it's not just you sweet that we all have a boy child problem that is the claim that is the claim so <clears throat> yeah i don't know um it's not it's not, it doesn't do it for me my favorite batman is bus is michael keaton not buster keaton michael keaton who's also in dope sick which is like this new thing about how like opi it's like a uh, yeah i've heard of it or whatever um the author's from virginia she's from roanoke I, i've sold like probably i've not sold i've but my store has sold probably like seven eight hundred copies of her book um it's our bestseller by a landslide um nationally nationally published na national bestseller no big deal um, yeah i've heard of it so my second question actually is uh you said that this episode really represents batman beyond to you and i was just curious what that meant like why is this the episode I mean, I so for, for first of all, it's I think it's because I remember there are two things I remember. One, the the sad kid with his robot, um, and because the episode's not really about Terry, it's mostly about Willie. So there are some episodes like there's another episode that's like maybe a little spicy, uh, where this like big game hunter from uh they just say Africa, they don't ever say where, they don't ever say what continent, is like hunting uh batman because he's like the bat spirit or whatever it's it's definitely like it's got some like weird dank 90s racism uh um but uh this it's not really about uh terry it's not really about batman beyond it's mostly about this poor kid named willie and and it's just like i don't know i like ep tv shows and movies where robots die which just was like so hard for me as a child like i used to i cried like mad uh and never watched it again um at iron giant i've only ever seen that I, I cried like so much. I was just I like about so to much. say, uh, Iron Giant is really the only experience I have with crying when a robot. Well, 
That's probably not true, but that's like a, a very distinct um, one. I also yeah. uh, cried at the end of the original Godzilla film um, where they destroy Godzilla. Um, and Godzilla, I can't remember Godzilla's which Godzilla. not a robot. Okay, but he's like a giant monster. I'm just saying, like, I have this, like, <laughs> there's a, there's a, oh, okay. He, yeah, okay, well, it's not a monster. Oh, you got me, you got me. You pranked me. How do you feel about, uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein? <laughs> I love that, that book, actually. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, I also cried with Hachi the dog. What? When Hachi the dog, what, when Hachi the dog, what? Oh, I thought we were just talking about crying now. <laughs> okay, but what did Hachi the dog do, Walt? Oh, it died. What? It died. Oh. Wait, so you like the you like the episode because you remember being sad about the robot dying. Yeah. Yeah, it just like there's like a lot of like emotional energy and investment in it. And I think I think also it it shows that Terry's like not the worst, right? Like Terry kind of like looks out for Willie. When 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 Willie like comes back to prom all like soaked because he just got thrown into the ocean, um, uh, Terry's like, "Come on, man, I'll get you out of here." And then like, uh, <laughs> then instead he's like, "Fuck you! It's time for robots." Um, no, I, I'm sorry. Terry doesn't do it. Terry's girlfriend does it. But earlier in the episode, he looks out for um, for Willie. And I I I don't know. It's just like kind of an outlier. Like. It, there are a few episodes in this in this like era of cartoons like uh Batman the animated series all the way to like Justice League Unlimited probably where there would be like these one-off episodes not one-off but like kind of like yeah yeah one-off episodes where it would be not focusing on the main character there's an episode of Batman the animated series i think it's the first episode that introduces the Joker where um <laughs> where uh some like schlemiel this like just like worker bee drone guy cuts off um joker in traffic and so the, the rest of the episode is him just like having to deal with the fact that the joker's like super pissed at him uh and like is, is basically like stalking him all over the place and there's not a whole lot of batman in the episode most of it is just like this like sweaty balding fat dude being like oh the joker's gonna fuck with my kids um, which is another episode I remember. So I think I think that's part of it. It's like most of it is just Willie getting shit on, and then at the end of the episode, it turns out he has like his time spent with the psychic robot has given him psychic powers, and it's a cliffhanger. And he comes back later, and he's like super in, in like season two, like super buff from his time in jail because he goes to jail. And it, it, anyhow, um, but it's, I don't know. I I just I something about something about a nerdy kid and a robot. Uh got my energy as a child. Catherine, what kind of non-pretentious... Actually, no, if I remember correctly, you also watched something pretentious. I think it's, like, medium pretentious. Okay, medium pretentious. Wow, we're grading levels of pretentiousness? Dude, we should actually introduce this now, but go ahead. Um, so I watched Daisies, a Czech film from 1967. I feel like it's part of, like, the... I'd say, I say middling pretentious, because I feel like if you have a Criterion subscription, you know maybe what this movie is it's not like walter level pretentious no i i did watch that i remember watching it in high school yeah there you go anyways i watched this movie called daisies it's czech it's a like czech new wave movie i think it came out in 1967 um i've probably seen this movie like four times now i really like this movie i think actually the first time i watched it was with walter but i don't remember watching it um, because I think I was drunk and we watched it really late at night with a bunch, <laughs> with a bunch of people. Um, so I know I had seen it, but I didn't remember it. And can I tell you, I remember that night really well. I was like, oh guys, I have a really, really fucking cool movie that we should watch together. And everyone wanted to watch a party movie, but I didn't catch the vibe. So I put on <laughs> daisies and there were five people sitting in the room and they all just seemed to like pass out and fall asleep. Yeah, we, we all fell asleep. <laughs> but everyone else was like not into it. And they were like distracting me. It was and like I was really like, late I'm trying at to night. watch this like movie <laughs> and I want you guys to pay attention. And no one was. Yeah, so that was the first time I watched Daisies. I was 
I was annoying Walter by being tired and drunk. And how, how, I, I know that if I was there, I would have been deeply, passionately wanting to have sex with Walter. I, I assume everyone in the room was also <laughs> wanting to have sex with Walter as he was making them watch daisies. Exactly. We we're just waiting for the movie to be over. That's actually what I interpreted, but I like slowly asked everyone personally, like if that was what was happening and everyone said no. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so I have a soft spot for, like, Czech New Wave in general. I did my uh, study abroad requirement in Prague, as all three of us had. Um, and I took a film a film class, and we watched, like, Czech, a lot of Czech movies. Um, and this was one of them. This was the time I first remember watching Daisies. Um, so, yeah, it was censored during the communist era because of, what did they call it? like showing too much decadence so it it came out later for them but basically i should say this film is about like two i would say like young women i don't think they're teenagers they're probably in like their early 20s and they decide that since the world is rotten we're gonna be rotten too is what they say i think it's a translation um and so it's kind of like very montagey it's not very plot driven it's just these two girls going around like playing tricks on on men like getting them to buy them dinner and then abandoning them or like what else do they do um they pick their noses yeah they're obsessed with food it's like their pleasure they eat a lot of food and they like have a lot of scenes of like cutting things up like they question if they even exist and then they decide that they exist because they can see like the destruction of things around them and so they like cut up food they like burn their apartment and they these are all different what montages they, what do they cut up food with scissors knives yeah what kind of food is it is it like a slice of pizza like yeah it's like weird foods it's like like They cut up, like, I guess it's mostly phallic foods. Like, they cut up, like, bananas, sausages, pickles. Whole hog sausages, right? Whole whole hog sausages. Um, Yeah, and there's a really cool scene at the end where they come upon this, like, really fancy feast in this town because they take this train to escape some guy outside of Prague, and they come upon this this kind of empty town and they go in this building and there's a feast laid out and they just go crazy and they eat the whole thing and they have a food fight. And then at the end that it's them being like, Oh, we're actually good workers and we're happy. And they put the food back. So they like smush it back together into the plates and stuff. And then they lay down and they're like, we're happy. And then that's the end of the movie. So it's kind of like a critique of like communist society, I guess. Wait, do they not die at the end? Oh, they get smashed by a chandelier. Yeah, that's what that's what I remember is that they die. I remember there not being enough lesbian kissing for me as a high school student. I remember our, like there's two girls in an art film. I was like, these girls are definitely gonna kiss. <laughs> I don't I don't remember them kissing, but I do remember them dying. Do they kiss? <laughs> I don't think they kiss. Um, they do take a bath together. But it's not sensual, really. That's probably why I don't remember that. Yeah. So, yeah, they they get crushed by a chandelier. I guess it's kind of up to the viewer to decide if they, they die or not. But I guess there's, like, the question of if these, if these um, girls are being, like, rebellious against this, like, material society, or are they just being regressive? Because they try and make them seem very, like, childlike and kind of stupid. Um, what do you mean by regressive? What do I mean by that? Like, they're destroying stuff. So they're rebelling against um, so what they see as, like, a society that's fucked up, but they're just destroying things, and they're not, like, really trying to do anything other than, like, create destruction and, like, fuck people over <laughs> and, like, have fun, which is cool, and it's a great... It makes for a really cool, fun movie. But, like, philosophically, I'm like, hmm, I guess you can be rebellious and regressive at the same time because you're, like, by being, like, destructive. I mean, they destroy themselves at the end because the chandelier falls on them. Right as they go, we're happy. So, yeah, I think the film is pretty open-ended in whether or not it's positive or not. Because you are happy. 
You just die. Well, I don't think they're really happy. I mean, there's a question of that because one of them, they have the same name. I think it's Maria, um, says, we're happy. And then the other one goes, like, are you serious? Like, are is this a joke? And she was like, no, like, it's serious. We are happy. But I'm not, like, convinced because they were doing the whole, like, communist chants of, like, we're a good worker and na 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 when they're, like, putting the feast back together. Um, so it seems like a fake happiness or something. But I don't know. My memory of the film is also not the best. But if we're talking about the ending, I do remember them trying to put the feast back together, but it still looks crap. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, the feast, you can never reconstruct the thing that you destroyed in a way. So... I wonder, I don't know, I kind of think it's a little open-ended for me of uh, whether or not the regressiveness or the, if, if, if uh, destruction is regressive or uh, progressive. But it's fun. Destruction is at least what we know. There's a fucking reason why we like watching destruction on TV because even in an art house film, it's fun. When I, I you, you're, you're, you're talking about whether or not destruction is is like whether regression is is a philosophically sound space to exist in and you know i think a lot of the 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 rise of communism in that whole sort of zone was was based on destruction right i mean they kicked out the czar and everything and that was that was the beginning of all this yeah i think communism itself has a bit of uh destructive tendencies in ingrained in like original writings right so i think it's a good point as you said it is very uh culturally and timely but it's still relevant today so. yeah no of course i mean I, I i recently had a conversation with my my boss about the the riot or the uprisings that happened during the, the george floyd protests and how like while i would be very upset if my the bookstore i work at got destroyed i i understood why people were looting i understood their anger and i i, I i'm not sure why philosophically it makes sense to me but it, it feels like rioting has value i'm not sure what that value is i've not pontificated on it enough but oh it totally does i mean it is actually actually this is like a topic that i researched so i have a lot of thoughts on it but yeah it's totally valid like um you could say that rioting or protest because those things are actually s super s stupid to distinguish right is just a way of like forcing a system that doesn't listen to you to listen to you and ha re create a renegotiation process, hopefully, of the issues that you're trying to bring up. So it totally has has purpose, I think. But I think destruction without purpose. But see, I I feel like the argument for a lot of people who were like super butthurt about the looting was that it was want want and destruction. It was destruction without a purpose, right? Um, I don't know if I agree with that. Yeah, I don't but agree with that. <laughs> but that's, that's I, I hear that. That's the argument that I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Purpose is hard to distinguish. It's usually uh, post purp. I mean, we usually look at stuff afterwards and then figure out what the purpose is. Like the majority, like individually, you can be like, I have a purpose. But like socially, events happen and then everyone points fingers. It's not I point my finger and then an event happens. Yeah, so that's why I think purposeless violence has its place. Like, I mean, in the end, Daisies, you can say the film director has an intention. But at the same time, she she never makes her intention that clear. And it is a very destructive film. And it is one of the reasons why Daisies is probably uh, a, a more, one of the more famous political films in general, right? Because it's so unique, so meaningless sometimes, feels so senseless. But then you feel there's a meaning through that senselessness. But I love Daisies. It's such a great film. So, I think senseless, um, senseless destruction can be, can serve a purpose. So, so it, it's not necessarily that senseless means there's no purpose. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. But anyways, well, no. I mean, when I when you're right, when a child like has had too much at the end of the day. And just like starts like when like a child's had too much and just like they're tired and they need a nap but they refuse to take a nap they're like slamming their fists on the ground and like Kroger and they're screaming for some reason and you can't make them stop it's like senseless destruction at that point maybe not destruction but it's senseless but it does serve the purpose this is like now you know like little Timmy needs to go the fuck to sleep for yeah for for maybe half an hour yeah exactly or you can give him the old 
you can give him the Timothy Charlemagne. Just throw him, throw him off a cliff. Sorry, Timmy. In the case of this film, I think the destruction is senseless. Um, like, there's no political reason. I mean, I think you could inject one, but I don't think it's there. And for the characters, that, like, they're just destroying stuff because they think, like, life is meaningless. So destroying stuff is meaningless. And um, it's fun. And I think, like, the director, right, has, like, a purpose for showing that. But I guess there's also a distinction between, like, what the work is saying and, like, the character's experience of it that is kind of confusing. But anyways, Walter, what movie did you watch this week, huh? Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say that, like, it's pretty wild that, uh, actually, I feel like some of the things I wanted to talk about are very related to just our discussion just now. The movie I wanted to share today is Things to Come by Marin Aid, because I watched it last night. And Wait, sorry, it's not by Marin Aid. That's a complete lie, and I made a mistake. It's by Mia Hansen Love. A uh, new French film director, uh, kind of hyped at some of these festivals that we always hear about. Uh, and stars Isabel. I, this is my favorite game of like uh, talking about films where I pronounce an actress or an actor's name wrong and then find out it's completely wrong. So <laughs> Isabel Hooper is not Isabel Hooper, right? It's Isabel Hooper? 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 Oh god. I have no idea. I always thought I always pronounced it in an equally probably equally embarrassing way. Isabel Hooper. Now no remembering that she's French, like of course you don't pronounce the T. God. <laughs> yeah, and there's and there's no H, right? Yeah, so I heard someone at a film festival call her Isabel Hooper. Hooper. And I was like, what the fuck? I didn't even recognize what he said because it was so different from how I pronounced it. So, okay, so yeah, good thing we found it out. Just a quick, uh, quick, quick, quick scan on her, uh, her, her filmography. Don't think I've seen a single <laughs> film this woman's in. She's kind of the, uh, the, the, uh, how do I, sh how do I say this? The queen of marshmallows for French cinema. She's probably the number one French actress in the world. I would argue that a lot of art house people probably think she's the queen of art house uh, films too. You gotta watch The Piano Teacher, Swade. That's, that's like, I mean, that's probably the main one I've seen. Like, the, I think I've seen two movies with her, but that's Is like, that the one about the guy who uh, loses his memory, but he still knows how to play the piano? No. No. <laughs> okay. Well, then, it's about, uh, it's a movie of, it's a movie about weird fetishes. It's actually, actually. about rape. <laughs> and rape. Yeah. She calls it fetishes. I called it rape. It is rape, but it's also like there it is about like fetishes as well, I would say. Um yeah, so let me actually talk about this film. Uh Things to Come, Things to Come. It's about a philosophy teacher who uh kind of just ha like lives life. So throughout her life she loses everything. Not like dramatically. But, like, her husband leaves, her children leave, her mother dies, her friends go away, her students change. And it's just like, all right, things change, life changes. Um, I thought it was kind of funny that the film was about passage of time because uh, the film has, like, captions suddenly where it goes one year past, ten years past, at the beginning of the film and the end of the film. But throughout this whole film, I literally could not tell when time was passing or not passing so it felt like when i first when i saw the several years later i was like thank you and then like at the end one year passed i was like oh i kind of thought a lot of years already passed since that last time you notified me but it was kind of a weird kind of way to do time so i liked that for sure the other thing I wanted to share about this movie is it reminded me of why I actually just don't understand cuisine from Europe. There's a scene where uh, Isabel Hubert is f I, I, fuck it. What, what should I call her? Hubert? Just just call her just call her Izzy H. Izzy H. Izzy H. There's a scene where Izzy H is eating with her family, and it literally looks like dinner. And she makes a bowl of strawberries for her family to eat. A bowl of strawberries. How the fuck do you make a bowl of strawberries in a fucking kitchen? 
and she asks her family, is my bowl of strawberries yummy? That doesn't make any sense. How can you make a bowl of strawberries yummy? I thought, and this is why I don't understand Europe. Wait, does she literally say, is my bowl of strawberries yummy? Yes. <laughs> yeah, do you think, maybe, do you think she's, do you think she made a fruit salad? <laughs> no, look at the scene. I can't see it. All we're seeing is a bowl with some strawberries towards the top. I don't know what else is in there. Yeah, it looks like a fruit salad. No, it does not look like a fruit salad. It looks like plain strawberries and nothing else. It looks like a fruit salad. Bro, which is very European. It's not a good representation of how to cook. And if you did cook like that, you should be embarrassed. Well, it's not cooking, really. Yeah, so then why would you ask your family, is my bowl of strawberries better taste? I think I agree. It's fruit salad. Okay, here's the question. Is it- alright, is fruit salad cooking? No. But that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Are you sure? I mean, because you kind of have to put stuff- Okay, maybe it is. is fruit salad... Maybe it is. This is- this would be why I think it's not cooking, or why it is cooking. Fruit salad isn't just put fruit in a bowl. It's also like you got you gotta get your lemon juice in there. You gotta get a little bit of cinnamon. You gotta put just a little bit of salt, just a little bit of bite from the salt. Maybe a little bit of balsamic vinegar, if you're if you don't have any lemon. So it it's it feels like making a salad. So is sa is making a salad cooking? Yeah, I guess it depends on if you say like cooking requires heat or not. You know, but I I you know what I say it's cooking. Salad is cooking, so this is cooking. I mean, I think fruit salads and salads are cooking. This is not a fucking fruit salad. This is like me giving you a box of tissue and being like, how do you like my tissue? Fuck you! It's not your tissue! Like, it makes no sense to ask that question. It's actually- The Europeans are crazy! That's the only conclusion here. They're fucking insane! Okay. I think there's only one fair way to solve this. We need to vote. So let's vote. Is it fruit salad and is Walter wrong? It's fruit uh, salad. Eyes. It's it's fruit salad. I. I. All opposed. We need to finish the vote. All opposed. I. Uh, well, majority rules. It is fruit salad. Bad take on the film, Walt. It just makes more sense for it to be fruit salad. Why would she ask if a bowl of strawberries is delicious, Walter? The other thing about this film that's really important is because I know both of you fuckers are cat people, except Catherine has betrayed the cat people by liking dogs now. This cat is, uh, has very googly eyes, and I thought it was- That's- Walter, that's what cat's eyes look like. That's just a cat. Oh, sorry, I don't- I- I eat my cats, so I don't really notice them. Oh, but, boy. uh- Isabel Uber, oh, Izzy H, she, uh, dealt with this cat very similar to how I feel like Suede deals with the cats. I've never seen you, Catherine, uh, deal with cats, so I wouldn't be able to say, but, uh, Suede deals with the cats exactly the same way Izzy H does. She takes her cat, makes faces at, uh, the cat, I think the cat's name is Pandora, so she makes faces at Pandora, and then she calls Pandora names, like, <laughs> Pandora, you are dirty slime ball. Pand all obviously in French, so. Le dirty slime ball. But yeah, she just shit stalks this cat, tells this cat this cat is useless, tells this cat is, um, a, uh, I, I hate you, I'm allergic to you, I hate you, blah 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 blah, and, uh, in the end she does give the cat away. What, do you treat your cat like that? Because I have two experiences with cat people now, and uh, they both hate their cats. I love my cat. Alright, let me, let me, I just want to respond really quickly. I love my cat to death. Uh, when she dies, I'm probably going to pull a Holden Caulfield and like, you know, like punch, punch a bunch of, punch a bunch of glass windows and all that good stuff. Um, or maybe pull a sling blade and kill people with a sling blade. I don't know which. But sometimes it can you just got to give them a hard time. I, I... I, I'm not going to use any of the language I describe, I, 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 I speak to my cat on because most of them are uh, are rated, but I do, I do give my cat a hard time, and it's mostly just because, you know, she's just like, she just like looks at you, and she's like cocks her head a little bit, and you know she's about to do some dumb shit, I wish I had pictures of this, <laughs> there's a banister leading up to my room, my cat was perched on the banister, and just vomited all the food on the banister, <laughs> and so there's just like a pile. There was just like a pile of vomit that had like slowly slid down the banister. Nice. It was it was despicable, and it took me a, a good bit of cleaning. And I was, uh, according to my dear sweet mother, who was there at the time, I was I was um, 
I was not cleaning it in the right way. I was using the Windex instead of the vinegar spray that she would rather have me using. I don't know what's wrong with using Windex, I mean, but it made the whole house... What's, what's wrong with Windex? Oh, 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 I thought you were going to say what's wrong with using Windex to clean up puke, but I realized you were going somewhere else with that. No, no, that's what I was using to clean up the puke. You mean, like, what's wrong with drinking Windex? Is that what we're talking about now? Hey, there is nothing wrong with drinking a Windex. It looks just like blue Gatorade. It it does. I have I have often contemplated drinking blue Gatorade. Anyways, I love my cats, but I my I, I do I had a really fat cat, and I'm like, come here, you fat piece of shit, come here, come here, you little fat tubby piece of shit. Come here, let me see. I I I'm probably not this mean to my cats. Um, I think the hard the hard time I give my cats is definitely G rated, but I do give them a hard time. I like to call them dum dums and and dummies. Um. <laughs> not not even joking um so yeah i think you gotta give your pets a hard time the the dog i live with do you think people give the same like hate towards dogs i was just gonna say my the dog i live with the owner like not in a mean way in the same way i don't think like suede you're probably yelling at your cat calling him a piece of shit you're just like ah oh, you piece of shit i i love you i don't know maybe yes, you're exactly. maybe you're mad but <laughs> no, I'm rarely I'm rarely mad at my cat. Yeah, and in the same way, the dog here sometimes they'll be like, "Dietzy, you're such a bitch." Like it's like, but they're not like you know mean. It's and I think it's the same way. It was was Izzy H being mean or was she just like, "Oh, you're you're I'm allergic to you, you piece of shit, you know, you slime ball." <laughs> So, actually, Izzy H's relationship with this cat was mega complicated. Wow. It's not even that important. It's just, like, uh, she, she Izzy H has issues, so <laughs> she can't connect to things after uh, slowly losing things, slowly and slowly. But she's also old, so she doesn't really need to. Yeah. But, yeah, let's actually talk about Izzy H, because she is very important. I kind of feel like... Mia Hansen's love is a director who really cares about her actors and actresses anyways. But this definitely felt like a Izzy H, I'm coming here, this is my fucking film, I'm dominating, I'm a character kind of film. It's usually not my favorite type of movie because I, like, um, I like films where I don't have to feel the acting voice as much. But, you know, I can respect it and I can still love the acting and think she's uh, great. So Izzy H uh, makes this film pretty funny, despite the fact that like it has that sort of dark undertone. So that's pretty cool. Uh, she's also a f I did I mention she was a philosophy teacher? Yeah, in the movie you did mention that. Okay, so that actually provides like a pretty funny dynamic because uh, that's why it's kind of related to the Daisy's conversation about philosophy. But also, what I found really funny is that there are scenes where she's like talking to her students. Her students, I literally feel like, are not acting. Because she's, like, doing philosophy with these students who, like, give her so much respect. And I bet these students are, like, actual students of acting, right? So they're not actually acting in these scenes, in my opinion. They're kind of like, oh, Izzy H is here? I'm so fucking excited Izzy H is acting in front of me anyways. So there's, like, no act... There's they're acting as philosophy students, but, like, in general, their brain wa like, wave... Their brain length... Their brainwaves are already, like, in respect to Izzy H being like, I'm here, I'm going to teach you acting. What I imagine is these scenes happen, and they immediately crowd around Izzy H and go, Oh my god, Izzy H, did you like this? Did you like my eyebrows mm -hmm. here? Did I, like, <laughs> smile at the right place here? And then, like, Izzy H will, like, give them advice. And they'll be, oh! And they'll all huddle around in the group where philosophy students please get in line on that side then they'll all line up there and they go oh my god is the h complimented me when i like swiped my hand it's like when we go to live concerts and someone gives us their set list on a napkin you know what i mean i just want to say that walter's understanding of acting has to do with eyebrows <laughs> can you can you go back to that can you talk about what you what do you, do you like my eyebrow length <laughs> so I don't know anything about acting and as I said that's probably why I don't care about acting driven movies as much as other people do so for me acting about bodies if you have good legs you have good eyebrows you have good hair you have good muscles then you're a good actor in my opinion that's why you love Timothy Chalamet I don't love Timothy Sha Chalamet I think he like I think Timothy Chalamet hides his eyebrows from us which makes him a bad actor 
Bro, that is not true at all. Have you seen his his? I've not seen the new Dune Dune movie, but he has some serious eyebrows in the commercial. Yeah, but he tries to make his eye his acting outperform his eyebrows. He should fuck his acting up a little bit and let his eyebrows outperform. Let his your eyebrows. eyebrows do the talking. That's what they say. Yeah, exactly. So, what if I shave my eyebrows? Can I be an actor if I shave my eyebrows? If you let your thing do the talking and not your acting do the talking okay, okay. if you i don't know what that thing is called when your skin the skin underneath your eyebrows i don't know what that skin is called anyways i also wanted to say that uh uh when, when i said ubert was like funny one of my favorite uh parts of that was like she makes this really fun sound it's literally oh, so i've seen a few ubert films i mean izzy h fuck it i said a few izzy h films and this is probably my favorite three seconds of her I've ever seen. So um, I'm just gonna play the sound because that's all I care about. So she goes, woo! I've never heard that from her, and I think it's fucking magical. Woo! Woo! Anyways, the scene is about her telling her husband, like, her husband's trying to leave her, and she's, like, packing up and trying to leave, and her husband's like, are you overreacting? And she goes, what the fuck are you on about? Are you living on another planet? Ooh, wake up. Everything's changing. So that's what she does. But I've never heard someone go, ooh, it's almost like that furry thing. Ooh, 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 ooh. it is. Do you think Izzy H is a furry? I, I think all French people are furries. I think Whoa. every person born in, in fact, yeah, she likes the... her cat, too. When, when everyone comes and immigrates, like when you had all the refugees immigrating to France, they actually all became furries. And that's why there's so much strife and frustration oh, is that the, a lot of people are having trouble. The, sort of... Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'll... No, 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 no. What, do you, do you a... have like a do you have like a secret urge of furry dumb that you want to share right now, Catherine? I, I don't. I don't. I was explaining a, a creepy sound in my house to someone. Where are they? Are they are they a fr- are they a French refugee who is also a furry? They're not, unfortunately, <laughs> so they had nothing constructive to add to this. I when we lived together, Walt, you watched this TV show. I think it was called The Darkness. Um, and what what was the the and and there was this line where the character would go Lund Lund. Oh, the killing. That sounds German. The killing. The killing. It's actually Danish. Danish. It's a Danish uh, murder show. The characters would one of the characters was Lund and the other was Tak, and you would you go Lund. No, Tak means. Stop okay, I'm Danish. sorry, I don't speak fucking Danish. Walt. Doesn't Tak actually mean like okay? Oh, maybe. Oh, is, oh, <laughs> oh, whoa! Are you? Is that? Is, is there a chicken? Because you got some fucking egg on your face, bro. You got some motherfucking egg on your face, Walt, well, you fucking piece of shit. Is that some Roanoke metaphor? Because I didn't understand that No, it's a fucking, it's a fucking, you have egg on your face. It's a, it's a, it's a soliloquy. It's a sil- syllogism. What is, uh, what is, uh, what does killing have to do with anything? Because I think if we were still living together, you would look at me when I, when we woke up, because we shared a room, uh, because we were, I guess, lovers. Um, uh, you'd look at me and be like, Tuck, Lund, Lund, Lund. So I... I feel like <laughs> if we still live together, you would have woken up and been like, oh, ooh, ooh, every 10 minutes. Ooh, been, ooh, ooh. Oh, gotcha. Ooh. Yeah, it's my new thing, actually. I'm just going to go. Ooh. Eventually, one of us would have, uh, me or our other roommate, Tori Lavander, uh, rest in peace. He's not dead. He's just a bitch. Uh, he he would have beaten, he would have smacked you. Because that's what it got to with the, with the Lund. It was a lot of slapping. Lund? Lund? That's true. People hated it when I said Lund. I loved her name, though. And she was like. Uh, one of my favorite uh, characters I've ever seen for a very long time. But I digress, and I move on to talk about philosophy, actually. So uh, one of the things that I found very interesting in this film, too, was that uh, there's a lot of uh, philosophy books, and she's always reading philosophy books, but she's not reading them. So I had to confirm. I actually can confirm this because I heard her say it in an interview. Maya Hansen Love does not read books, and that makes me feel a lot better because this these type of fucking scenes are the type of scenes that make you want to read books, not feel like you've read the book. The reason why I think it's important is because it makes me wistful of the time in college that I used to engage in this type of critical thought. And you want to be sad about it, but the easy answer is just fucking read more. But, you know, you grow up, you get under interest, you uh, become jaded, 
I think you do the same thing with films, I could say. Like, you're, you do a lot of critical thinking in the movies that you watch. Right. I, I have found other things to give me uh, that same sort of, I don't know what you want to call it, the fruit of juice. But The fruit um, of juice. There we go. Print it. Print it. Put it on a t-shirt. Put it on a t-shirt. Put it on a mug. But uh, why I think this is so uh, cool to me is because it relates to... So what I didn't really talk about was that uh, you can tell that uh, Izzy H is a bit of... Uh, she used to have a very radical past, per se. She used to go into... Uh, she used to be a communist or something like that. And uh, she has uh, a lot of philosophy students who protest, who are annoyed at her for staying to teach and not uh, going out to act. And be activists and she ha her favorite student is a person who lives at a commune throughout the whole story like these her students are always judging her for not being radical enough or she's judging herself for not being radical enough and it, i have been feeling this really strongly recently in a really like weird way i found this one so fucking relatable and it was so interesting because it because this radicality is like very related to our discussion about destruction like is it okay to be passive when the world needs destruction or something like that that's like what her students kept like begging her to do be destructive you can't just sit here and teach philosophy so um the reason why i've been feeling this intensely though is my sister is getting really heavily into environmental radicalism and she's being aggressive about it violent about it you can say but she's in university so She's surrounded by that type of thought, that type of energy, that type of... When I have to have conversations with her, I can't feel that energy a lot of the times. I can't get to there and be like, yeah, I want to make change. I want to uh, be the difference in the world. But I still respect where the energy is coming from. And I still love that the energy exists. The issue is when you talk to people who are still in that very active, energetic um uh, mindset and i'm not saying i won't ever get there i'm just saying currently i don't have it it's hard to not be con condescending where you're like oh congratulations you're super energetic in this protest sort of uh be beauty just sit there and enjoy easy h was trying not to be condescending to all our students but she just could not relate to that her, her students' energy anymore so I don't know the film sort of makes it like made me think a lot about like how i could not be judgmental all right i think that's about all the time we have and we'll wrap up i'm walter and uh catherine and sweet are gonna say bye to you guys too bye guys i'm catherine <laughs> my name is uh sweet best and remember um, gentlemen just uh took on in and bed Oh, that was, that was nice. Thanks for listening to me talk about random films and not films. Um, hope to see you guys next time.